Good morning, everyone. It is Monday, March 1st. Can you believe that we are already here into March? Um, just seems crazy that February is gone. So let's take a look here at the, this is the SPY futures. And here, what we are watching is we have this little reversal coming in. We're going to talk a little bit about the news that's surrounding, or the news from the whole weekend um, that that's probably helping this push. One thing I do want to take note of here is on these red days that we had, we had some pretty good volume, right? We, we really pushed it up there. So today, what we want to see in return is an answer of that, an answer of money coming back in and pushing this candle up. And more importantly, even if we only move up a little bit from where we are now, if we have a really good volume bar pushing us in saying, that's, you know, your bigger money coming in and saying, yep, we like it. We're still good. But why? What is moving the market? Well, we're going to start here with J&J. &J, and it's not just J&J. &J. They, they are starting shipment of their vaccine. It's a one-shot vaccine going out today. And we've seen this in other names, too. You know, it's, it's really exciting. And although J&J &J isn't, you know, just running off the charts, because we knew that this news was coming out for a while, um... What does it mean? Well, think about it. We now have several vaccines. So it's giving people the hope that things are going to, you know, we're going to be able to go to Disney World if we want or go to Six Flags or go to the water park this summer. And not, I mean, it's hard to believe that we've really been trapped for a whole year at this point. Um, and we've learned a lot from it. And that's what we need to take from it. We need to not constantly look back and say, oh, my God, I can't believe this. What a terrible year. Well, what did you learn from this year? That's what we need to look at. Remember, every goal, every glass is not just half full. It's always full. Even if it's not full of water, it's always full because you need the air to breathe. So it's all about perspective in life. But J&J &J, taking a very nice move along. Another news bit that's out. They passed the, they got through the first hurdle for stimulus, and that was passed really early Saturday morning. Now, regardless of what you, if you like the stimulus bill or not, what people are looking at is the fact that money's going to get out there. You know, they're going to send these checkouts, checks out, and even though our savings rate is ridiculously high right now, I don't want to say ridiculous, it's always good to have a good savings rate, but much stronger, I think, than most people realized it would be at this point, um, it's pushing money out. Right, it's getting it out into the um, the markets. It's going to fixing our homes or taking a family out or planning that vacation. Right, so a lot of good uh, money just flowing back into a lot of businesses. States opening up. Right, really important to those smaller businesses. Those are the ones that have been unfairly hit. I mean, just really they took took the the burden. Um, whether it's a small restaurant or just, uh, you know, small retail, whatever, they have been so hard hit here. And then finally, um, our last piece is the, the Treasury. So last week we saw the Treasury tick up a bit and people started freaking out. It's coming back down a little bit now, right? It's coming back down a little bit today. But there's something to still keep in mind that even though it ticked up and people, you know, were starting to hear all of the not so whispery <laughs> um, rumors of whether we're going to get inflation or there's a bubble. Well, the Treasury yield started to come back just a little bit here. All right, so getting back here, sorry, we had a little pause there for Sherman's um, doctor calling this morning. Okay, so the Treasury yield pooling back a little bit, but the, the reason that things really cooled off last week when that treasury yield did go up, even though it wasn't a huge amount, right? We get all these whispering, we start to like, oh, doubt what's going on, and I, I get that. And we've been um, up at highs and near highs for quite a while. Eventually things just have to take a, take a break, take a little correction. But people who are borrowing large amounts of money, when that treasury takes up, they're like, eh, maybe I'll just wait it out a little bit. Because the difference between paying like maybe you know, three and a half percent versus four percent is huge when you're when you're borrowing large sums of money. And I'm not talking like, you know, buy a five hundred thousand dollar house kind of money. I'm talking, you know, if you're borrowing millions of dollars, right? That makes a huge but I mean it still makes a big difference, but a penny saved is a penny earned. But nonetheless, 
um, the treasury ticking back down a, a bit here. So people, you know, feeling a little bit better and a little bit more confident. Okay, so what am I watching today? Well, I'm going back to one that the room traded really well last week. It was on Thursday's list, but Thursday did this. Right, Wednesday, we had a really good day in Starbucks. Thursday, took that nice pause. Friday came in, look at the volume on it, pushed it right up. And so really good, um, you know, a lot of excitement, a lot of money coming into Starbucks. And I still like it here today. Now this morning, it is sitting at, and it's not just because I really need Starbucks, although I do. Um, it's sitting at 108.03, which is right where it closed. So what would be a trigger for me to get in? Definitely needs to be over this 107.75, but really I want it over that 108. I want it over that 108, and I want to close at least in this wick today. Um, I would love to close higher than that, but I am looking at the 618 110s. Now, I know, people come, they always ask, why am I buying so much time? It's my shtick. It's what I do. It's what I feel comfortable with. If we get some kind of weird news, then I can be like, eh, that's okay. I can kind of sit through it for a little bit, allow things to work out. So if you don't like that, then look at a different um, expiration, but the 110s are a pretty good one here. If you don't mind going just a little bit out of the money, if not 105 is a great one. But Starbucks, great trades on that on Friday though, guys. I'm really impressed. Well, since we do have these vaccines and we are planning to get back out, trip. We did talk about this one last week. EXPE is another one. Look at those get out of the house stocks. But look at this. We had three, these three candles and this morning we're coming in and opening up a bit higher. So I'm going to say that we need to... I would play this maybe off of an opening range. Would like a little dip here in the first hour and come back into this a little bit. We are 51.92. So we are a buck and a half higher than than this, um, than where we, the high that we had put in. But wouldn't mind pulling back just a little bit as long as we stay over that 50-50 mark. I like trip. Looking at the 618.60s on that. And I know some of these names just keep coming back around, but they keep coming up on my scanners here. Upwork, like Upwork. We have a three looking like it may want to cross the eight. Now this morning we are up a good bit in the futures. Our NASDAQ's up 160. The Russell's up 43. So we are, the Dow's up 325. So a lot of things are looking to the upside. What I would suggest, unless you just want to do a quick day trade in the morning, is maybe just take a look. Um, allow the markets to get that, um, you know, the, the pressure from all weekend, kind of blow it off and then let it settle in, let the first half hour to an hour go by and then come in and see what you might want to take as a swing trade. Upwork might be a very good one of these because we have a nice set. It's, it's sitting at 55.50 right now. That's going to pull the three nicely up over the eight, staying up over this longer term trend line, pushing away from the 20. Lots of room to push up here. I like this to come. I think our first hurdle will be here about 56.90. But look at this. Lots of room all the way up to that previous high at 63.88 in Upwork. Looking at the April 16th, 16. 60, sorry. Uh, April 16th, 60s. Okay. The other things... Um, to really remember here is, you know, there could be a lot of volatility. Watch for volume in stocks. You want the volume to be going in your direction. That shows that peak buyers are coming in and pushing it along. And I did post in the market watch that we have some uh, earnings coming out still this week. So go take a look at those. And I posted the volatility calendar that goes along with this. I don't know why I never really posted that before, but the, um, the, most anticipated earnings and then some of those that have the best volatility around those earnings. So go take a look at it. If you have any questions, be sure to reach out. Heather C at GivingTreeTrading.com and I will see you soon.